Hello, I'm Dan Edelman, an Applications Engineer at Linear Technology, and in this video I'll present a tutorial of SOA Therm. Often, the most challenging aspect of designing hot swap circuits is ensuring that a MOSFET safe operating area is not exceeded. With the LT SPICE SOA Therm tool, it's possible to verify within your circuit simulation that a MOSFET has not exceeded its rated safe operating area. MOSFET datasheets contain a safe operating area, or SOA plot, that describes the maximum time a MOSFET can be exposed to a specific voltage and current. Consider the SOA plot shown here, and assume that the MOSFET will be subjected to a temporary 10 volt 100 amp condition. If we look at the 10 volt 100 amp intersection on this plot, we see that the allowable time falls between the 1 millisecond and 10 millisecond lines. Therefore, this MOSFET manufacturer specifies that you can safely apply a 10 volt 100 amp condition for at least 1 millisecond without damaging the MOSFET. Note that this plot is only accurate when the MOSFET case temperature is held at 25 degrees Celsius and a single pulse with a fixed voltage and current is applied. As circuit designers, we have become accustomed to thinking about SOA in terms of voltage, current, and time, but in fact, SOA is determined by the peak die temperature of the MOSFET. As long as the MOSFET die does not exceed the maximum allowed temperature, the SOA conditions are satisfied. In fact, next to the SOA plot in every MOSFET datasheet is the transient thermal impedance plot. The transient thermal impedance specifies how the die temperature changes in response to the power dissipated by the MOSFET. Typically, the SOA plot in a MOSFET datasheet is derived from the transient thermal impedance of the MOSFET. One caveat here is that at high drain to source voltages, the die may experience unequal heating in a behavior often referred to as the Spirito effect. For more information about SOA, transient thermal impedance, and the Spirito effect, see Linear Technology Applications Note, Safe Operating Area, and Hot Swap Circuits. Among the features of the SOA Therm tool are that it simplifies hot swap circuit design by providing an indication of the peak MOSFET die temperature. This allows you to verify in an application circuit simulation that the MOSFET's SOA is not exceeded. And, unlike the SOA plot shown earlier, the SOA Therm output is valid for any waveform shape, not just for a single pulse at a fixed voltage and current. Also, MOSFET manufacturers only provide SOA plots for a fixed case temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. SOA Therm provides accurate results for other case temperatures, as you will see during this tutorial. Note that as long as the manufacturer has characterized this burrito thermal runaway behavior in their SOA plot, the simulated SOA Therm output will reflect this burrito behavior accurately. In this tutorial, I'll walk through a few examples that demonstrate the SOA Therm tool. These same steps are outlined in the online article titled LT SPICE Modeling Safe Operating Area Behavior of In Channel MOSFETs. Let's start by opening an example hot swap circuit. There should be a link at the right side of this webpage to the circuit SOA Therm NMOS example. Click on this link to open the file in LT SPICE. You should see a circuit that contains the LTC 4260 hot swap controller driving a PSMN 4R8 100 BSE MOSFET from NXP. Run this simulation. It steps through four different loading conditions at the output, 1 ohm, 10 ohms, 50 ohms, and 100 ohms. When you click on the output node, the waveform viewer shows the voltage. The LTC 4260 has powered up successfully into the 10, 50, and 100 ohm loads. Into 1 ohm, the LTC4260 detects the excessive loading at the output and prevents the output voltage from ramping up. It retries every 150 milliseconds into the 1 ohm load. Now, we're going to place the SOA Therm NMOS symbol on top of the symbol in the schematic. To do this, select Edit Component and type SOA Therm NMOS. Then, Double-click on the SOA Therm NMOS symbol name in the list below. We want to place the SOA Therm NMOS symbol on top of the NMOS that's in the schematic. Use Ctrl-R to rotate the symbol and place it on top of the NMOS, 
do not delete the NMOS that's already in the schematic. Right-click on the eye of the SOA Therm NMOS symbol. Now, in the SPICE model field, we'll right-click and select the PSMN 4R8 100BSE from the drop-down menu. By doing this, we've selected the thermal model of the MOSFET we're going to simulate in our schematic. Select OK, and you'll see that in our schematic, the name of the thermal model, the PSMN 4R8 100BSE, matches the name on the electrical model that's in the schematic. If that's a little confusing right now, don't worry, it'll become more clear as we go through the rest of the tutorial. Select Edit, Draw Wire, and we're going to draw two wires, one at the TC pin and one at the TJ pin. Next, we're going to label those two nets. The first one will label TC FET and the second one TJ FET. To do this, select Edit, Label Net, and then type TC FET, click OK, and then click on the TC FET net. Then do the same thing for the TJ FET net. Run the simulation again, and this time, Double-click on the TJ-FET node. The voltages at the TC-FET and TJ-FET nodes represent the case temperature and junction temperature of the MOSFET in degrees Celsius. We see that TJ-FET reaches 132 degrees C, and it started from 85 degrees C. So at this point, you're probably wondering, why does it start from 85 degrees C? The SOA Therm symbol has a default ambient temperature value of 85 degrees C. We can change that by right-clicking on the eye of the symbol and changing the T ambient equals 85 to T ambient equals 70. So let's do that now. Run the simulation again, and this time we can see that the TJ FET node has a maximum value of 117 degrees C. If we look at the data sheet for this MOSFET, the PSMN 4R8 100 BSE, we see that it has a maximum junction temperature of 175 degrees C. What does this simulation show us? Well, the maximum junction temperature is less than 175 degrees C, so this meets the SOA limits of the datasheet. Be aware, MOSFET manufactured datasheets for SOA limits are often typical values and require extra design margin to avoid pushing the MOSFET to the edge of its rated limits. So, don't design right up to the edge of the 175 degrees C limit. Also note, on the web page that contains this video, there's a link on the right side to an Excel spreadsheet that contains information about the MOSFETs modeled by SOA Therm. This includes maximum junction temperature and the manufacturer's SOA plots, as well as the modeled SOA Therm curves. Let's try one more test. Change the gate capacitor from 10 nanofarads to 100 nanofarads by right-clicking on the 10 nanofarads and changing it to 100 nanofarads and run the simulation again. Look at the TJ FET waveform this time. The maximum junction temperature is now almost 300 degrees C when loaded with 1 ohm. Obviously, this is not a good idea. The slow ramp on the gate results in MOSFET heating, but the MOSFET is not yet in current limit where the LTC 4260 timer starts to run. Let's change the capacitor back to 10 nanofarads and run the simulation again. Instead of looking at the TJ FET node, this time look at the TC FET node. This is the case temperature of the MOSFET. With a 1 ohm load and auto retry enabled, the case temperature walks up with each retry. If this is a possible scenario in your application, either disable auto retry or ensure that the PCB layout and airflow provides adequate cooling. Next, we'll change the theta JA parameter to account for improved PCB and airflow cooling. Every SOA Therm NMOS library model contains a default R theta JA value from the MOSFET manufacturer's datasheet. When necessary, R theta JA can be changed by modifying the R theta JA attribute. For examples of board area and cooling effects on R theta JA, please refer to the LT 3080 datasheet section Thermal Considerations. In this example, let's change the R theta JA value to 10 and run the simulation again for 60 seconds. 
To do this, right-click on the eye of the SOA Therm symbol, and next to the T ambient parameter, add another parameter, R, theta J, A, and we'll set it equal to 10. Click on the OK. And now that we're back in the main schematic, right-click on the dot trans statement and change the stop time from 2.5 seconds to 60 seconds. Click OK and then run this simulation. This time, the TC-FET node, which is case temperature, rises to 25 degrees C above ambient. Since the MOSFET's dissipating an average of 2.5 watts and the theta JA is equal to 10 degrees C per watt, this makes sense. Recognize that the SOA Therm in MOS library models do not assume any heat sinking from the PCB or an external heat sink. For more information about modeling heat sink behavior, see the SOA Therm block. A few warnings. The SOA Therm models are based on the information found in the MOSFET manufacturer's data sheets. Therefore, the models are only as accurate as the data sheet information. Furthermore, MOSFET manufacturers often fail to adequately measure behavior in the high VDS burrito region, so design with plenty of margin and always verify your circuit on the lab bench under worst case conditions. One final note, don't expect parallel MOSFETs to share current equally when they're operating in the linear region where the drain to source voltage is greater than about 1 volt. If you're required that they share current, an SOA, in this region of operation, they must have separate control loops with gates driven independently. So, now that we've finished this tutorial, where do you go from here? Read Linear Technology Applications Note, MOSFET Safe Operating Area and Hot Swap Circuits. Try other MOSFETs in the SOA Therm in MOS Library. And look at the Excel spreadsheet that's linked to at the right side of the web page. Finally, test your circuit in the lab. Don't blindly trust MOSFET manufacturers' SOA plots and don't forget that while simulations are a useful tool, they're not a substitute for solder in an oscilloscope.